What did the unique photos of Venus really show? Why are they so crucial in our understanding of the second planet from the Sun? As NASA prepares its latest missions, one question remains particularly present. What secrets did the Soviet Venera probes reveal in the 1970s and 1980s? Are there clues that have eluded us until now? And what might be the consequences if NASA discovers signs of life? Venus, this enigmatic and blazingly hot celestial body, has fascinated and puzzled scientists for decades. Join us as we dive into the compelling history and future of Venus exploration. The Russian Venera Program Why the then Soviet Union, of all nations, set its sights on Venus remains a mystery to this day. Some claim that the nation invested incredible sums in Venusian exploration in order to cheat the Americans in the race to conquer space. Others claim that the Russians already possessed extensive knowledge of life on the planet at the time, but did not share that knowledge with the world. Which is true, we may never know. There is repeated speculation that both Russia and the US are withholding important space knowledge to keep people in the dark about what is really going on in the cosmos. But let's stick to the facts for now. On March 5, 1982, the Soviet Venera 14 spacecraft successfully landed on the surface of our hellish neighbor, Venus. It operated for a total of only 57 minutes before the technology gave in to the heat and toxic fumes on Venus. Still, the mission is considered one of the most successful in all of space exploration. The color panoramic images, tape recordings, and data from the descent through the atmosphere are considered unique. In essence, it was akin to a miracle that a probe remained functional on Venus for nearly an hour at all. And Venera 14 was not the only successful Venus probe. Venera was an entire series of space probes launched by the Soviet Union in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s to explore Earth's hellish neighbor. Depending on its position and its orbit, Venus is not much farther from us than Mars. While Mars is in the direction of the outer planets, Venus is inside in the direction of the Sun. Thus, it's clear that this planet could be slightly warmer than the Earth. In reality, however, it is so hellishly hot on Venus that there is no scientific rational explanation for it. Venus is even clearly hotter than Mercury, which lies closest to the Sun. Already in the 60s, space experts and scientists thought about which planet could be visited by humans one day. The US set its sights on the Moon, and Mars was next. The Soviet Union turned to Venus, although it was already clear at that time that a human being could hardly land on this planet. While on Mars, stays for humans would be possible if they are protected by appropriate spacesuits and supplied with oxygen. Even the best protective measures would soon fail on Venus. Even building the probes was a masterpiece. Russian engineers spent nearly three decades building them. For years, the nation launched probe after probe toward Venus. The first ones missed their targets. Later probes crashed on landing, or their camera systems failed. Over the course of the program, eight successfully landed on the surface, and four were able to take incredible photos. Some of the scientific knowledge was proudly shared with the rest of the world by the then Soviet Union. But certainly, Russian researchers did not share with the world all of their knowledge about the planet. At the time of the Venera missions, the Cold War was raging, and the East and West were hostile to each other. Making the impossible possible. The reason it's so difficult to land on Venus is extreme temperatures and high pressure inside the atmosphere. Although data on the eventual climatic conditions on Venus were available as early as the 1950s, the planet was considered a great mystery. This is because Venus is constantly shrouded in a thick blanket of clouds that is impenetrable to telescopes. Seeing the surface of Mars from Earth is easy, but looking at the surface of Venus from orbit is impossible. Inside the atmosphere, temperatures are about 475 degrees Celsius. That's more than seven times hotter than the highest air temperature ever measured on Earth, and hot enough to melt lead instantly. At the surface of Venus, the thick cloud creates a crushing air pressure more than 80 times that on Earth. The pressure resembles terrestrial oceanic pressures that exist more than 914 meters below the surface of the water. Combined with the extreme heat, this environment can easily destroy a spacesuit. However, the Venera landers 
were designed to withstand these intense conditions just long enough to collect data and give us our first look at the surface of Venus. To that end, Russian engineers built a sophisticated protective shell, almost certainly made of highly cooling metals and other materials similar to those used in the present for the Parker Solar Probe. Of course, the exact construction plans for the probes remain a secret of the Soviet Union, or Russia, to this day. This much is known. The Venera 9 and 12 probes had a spherical design that contained a compartment inside that could protect the electronics from atmospheric pressure and heat for as long as possible. Below the sphere was a shock-absorbing ring for landing. Above the pressure sphere was a cylindrical antenna structure and a wide, dish-shaped structure that looked like an antenna, but was actually an arrow break. The Venera 13 and 14 probes had a similar design, but were far more advanced internally. After the first landing successes, the Russian astronauts dared to install more and more sensitive and expensive technical equipment in the probes. They contained instruments to make scientific measurements of the ground and atmosphere after landing, including cameras, a microphone, a drill, and surface sampler, as well as a seismometer. They also had instruments on board to record electrical discharges during their descent phase through Venus's atmosphere. The camera was the centerpiece. A telephotometer was used to skillfully direct light to the camera, which was placed safely inside the lander. First Images of Venus Venera 9, launched on June 8, 1975, was the first mission to attempt to take photographs of the surface of Venus. Unfortunately, although the spacecraft landed successfully, only one of the lens caps on the two cameras separated. What was intended to be a 360-degree panoramic photo around the lander became a 180-degree photo. Nevertheless, humanity got its first glimpse of this alien scorched landscape. Angular and partially weathered rocks dominate the landscape, many partially buried in the ground. The horizon is visible in the upper left and right corners and somehow seems strangely auspicious, as if there is something important yet to be discovered here. The white object at the bottom of the photo is part of the lander. The distortion is caused by the old Venera imaging system. Venera 10 reached the surface on October 25, 1975. Again, unfortunately, only one of the lens caps separated properly, and a 180-degree panoramic photo was taken. According to scientists, the illumination was similar to that on Earth on a cloudy summer day during the exposure. The objects at the bottom are parts of the spacecraft, and the ground appears to be covered with flat slabs of rock, similar to volcanic areas on Earth. In December 1978, Venera 11 and 12 landed on Venus and collected over an hour of data. Initial attempts to capture color images failed. The problem with the lens caps reappeared on both missions, so the landers returned valuable data but were unable to take photographs. After this disappointing lens cap failure, engineers made a series of changes to the design of Venera 13 and 14, creating the only probes to date to ever transmit color photos of the cloaked Venusian landscape. Venera 13 landed on Venus on March 1, 1982. The lens caps were successfully ejected and the cameras began taking a panoramic photo around the lander. The probe survived 127 minutes before the technology gave way to the harsh environment, but the time was enough to capture the landscape of Venus in color. The photo of the bizarre landscape of flat, dark, layered rocks and fine-grained soil remains the best ever taken of Venus 40 years later. Just four days later, on March 5, 1982, another probe, Venera 14, successfully landed in a different region of Venus. In this corner of Venus, the soil appears much more broken up, with less granular soil material. You can see the ejected lens cap in the image and the hazy horizon in the distance. Each of these incredible photos gave us a small glimpse into this world. They showed us a yellow sky over a cracked, abandoned landscape that looks both alien and familiar. Venus is harsh, so no earthly creature could ever survive there. Yet, this world may once have been Earth-like before experiencing catastrophic climate change. Is Earth facing the same fate? For a long time, NASA was not interested in exploring Venus. Toward the end of the last millennium, 
This was certainly due to the fact that there was hardly anything to counter the Russian findings. Just like Russia, the USA had to save money, and programs like the Venera series were unthinkable for both nations for a long time. The focus was on planets and moons where traces of life were expected, or which, like Mars, might one day be colonized. Then, US researchers found evidence for a biomarker in Venus's atmosphere. It could be that the planet harbors microorganisms. At the same time, voices were raised that the Venera missions had also found evidence for life, but the Russian researchers reportedly kept this knowledge to themselves. For NASA, the new findings are reason enough to send its own probes to Venus again. NASA's Da Vinci Plus mission will study the origin, evolution, and current state of Venus from the top of the clouds to the ground. Beginning in 2029, the Da Vinci probe is expected to visit Venus's orbit to search for signs of life and find answers to questions about whether Venus was once a habitable place. Our own world may currently be at the beginning of drastic changes. If some climate scientist models are to be believed, the greenhouse effect and chain reactions could one day turn our now beautiful green and water-rich planet into an inhospitable hell world. If we understand more about the processes now, we may be able to develop technologies to better protect our planet. Da Vinci will also launch a descent probe carrying a camera. If the mission succeeds, the lander will become the first probe placed on the surface of Venus by NASA and the first spacecraft to land on this hot world since the Venera probes. During its hour-long descent, the probe will take thousands of measurements and provide brand new close-up images of the surface. Unfortunately, the Da Vinci Plus descent probe will not carry a panoramic camera, which means that the old photos from the Venera landers may be the best close-up images of Venus for many years to come. 